Hello, my name is Nicole Strijek, and today I'll be presenting to you my historical document analysis. The newspaper I selected is from the Edwardsville Intelligencer, which is located in Edwardsville, Illinois. It was published on April 17, 1969, by the author of Robert Semple, Jr. He was the associate editor of the New York Times editorial page and covered topics on civil rights, environment, and energy policy. Here's a clip of my newspaper article. During, during the time when the newspaper was published, many people demanded and protested for reform in the United States. They wanted to create a new America that would eliminate injustice and inequality from democratic ideals. They protested marches to fight against poverty, segregation, and sexual discrimination for job opportunities. They also wanted to withdraw from the Vietnam War. After John F. Kennedy was assassinated, Lyndon B. Johnson became the president in 1963 and vowed to keep Kennedy's vision of ending the war in poverty and establishing a great society. Under his presidency, he successfully implemented Medicare, Medicaid, Head Start, federal college scholarships, and the Office of Economic Opportunity, also known as OEO. The article, Head Start Doesn't Work, explains how Head Start is not an effective, comprehensive program for disadvantaged children. They defend this argument with the results of a study that was conducted from Westinghouse Learning Corporation and Ohio State University. The study started in June of 1968 and was conducted for nine months. It included 104 Head Start centers throughout the country. In the study, they compared equal groups of underprivileged children in the first second, and third grade. The study included children who previously attended the Head Start program and children who did not attend a preschool program. The purpose of the study was to measure the difference in uh, students' intellectual and social development. All results of the study, except for one, showed that children who attended Head Start are not better off than the children who did not attend the program. They found that year-round Head Start programs had a mi minimal impact on disadvantaged children, whereas the summer program had no impact on cognitive development. They also found in all three grade levels, students who attended summer and year-round programs did not perform higher in language development than their control group. The Stanford Achievement Test was administered in grades two and three, and this test assesses their verbal and mathematical skills. This assessment did not find an increase in scores between the students who attended Head Start and the students who had no preschool education. In addition, the study also did not find any significant differences and three assessments that were utilized to measure their social and emotional well-being. These results surprised the research team because Head Start prides themselves on improving a child's social and emotional growth. Contrary to these data results, the Metropolitan Readiness Test was the only assessment that provided small but essential evidence of children who attended year-round Head Start. These children who attended Head Start performed better than those who did not. However, this test only assesses their prerequisite skills for first grade. Overall, these results prove that Head Start fails to provide any significant educational or social gains for students in first, second, or third grade. 
The authors of the study state how Head Start is not worth the amount of money in its present form and needs to be re-examined. The article is relevant in today's world because even after 50 years later, many studies are still being conducted on Head Start's program to determine if it is valid and worth the amount of money spent on it each year. Does Head Start produce significant academic and social gains compared to children who did not attend Head Start? If so, do these gains have long-term effects? These questions were discussed in the 1969 article and are presently being studied today. For example, the article stated that students in the second or third grade did not perform better than their peers who did not attend Head Start. Currently, similar data shows the program to produce minimal benefits and that the progress fades over time. However, in other present studies of Head Start, they have found the program to have positive and long-term effects. The current data on Head Start contradict each other. Therefore, I believe the results highly depend on the quality of data you are interpreting. Some research will show it is beneficial, whereas others prove it to be ineffective. Today, many experts question Head Start's ineffectiveness due to the lack of empirical evidence provided in the data collected. With regards to my personal opinion of the article, I believe the study was conducted in a short period and could have possibly benefited if the research was examined over a more extended period of time. However, after reading the data in the article, I agree that Head Start could be enhanced and needs to be redesigned to improve the quality of early learning experiences for disadvantaged children. I firmly believe it would be beneficial for them to revise the program and find ways to make Head Start stronger by using the data results of the study to support ongoing continuous student improvement for student learning and achievement. With, my, with regards to my overall opinion of the article, I appreciate how the study, <coughs> excuse me, I appreciate how the study utilizes a control group to compare and assess the effectiveness of the Head Start program. However, I believe that there were limitations in the study because it does not provide enough data to determine Head Start's overall effectiveness. It fails to conduct further research on why Head Start children do not have academic gains in elementary school when compared to the peers who did not attend the program. The study also did not assess the whole child as it neglects to include data on the health and nutrition of the student and family in, their, um, in the family dynamics. I believe these components are essential to take into consideration because they encompass Head Start's framework that makes it a successful program. In closing, I believe that this assignment was very informative. I have learned that the 1960s was a critical time in history that completely changed politics, society, and education in America. It was an era of student movement, protest to fight against poverty, segregation, the Vietnam War, and sexual discrimination for job opportunities. It also shed light on how 50 years later, the Head Start continues to be a highly debated topic on whether it is beneficial for disadvantaged children.